Um, I hope by now that these are familiar faces, so I'm not going to do uh, any kind of extensive introduction. In fact, I'm going to ask each of you, if you could, to just um, tell the audience who you are, um, just who you are and who you work for. You know, your name of your company, please. Hello, my name is Oliver Karius. I work for LGT Venture Philanthropy, and we are an impact investor investing social into social enterprises in emerging markets. Hello, my name is Faraz Khan, um, originally from Pakistan, and uh, I am the founder of a company called Seed Ventures that invests in grassroots businesses in emerging markets. Hello, my name is Veronica D'Souza. I am the co-founder and managing director of the Ruby Cup. My name is Bo Seil. Uh, me and two business partners, actually two business partners and I, <laughs> uh, last year launched uh, an investment firm called Unitas Impact, which is really focused on investing in livelihood ventures in Asia. So anything that boosts incomes for low-income populations or provides new livelihood opportunities. Thanks, everybody. Um, now, I want all of you to know that m these colleagues of ours don't actually know much about what I'm going to ask them. And so uh, I need to address you for just a second. Um, uh, I'm going to ask you some really very simple questions, but they're questions that really require you to answer me with complete candor. So whatever um, the question is, you know, think about it for a second if you need to. And we really want to know, you know, what the thought is that, that comes in response. And for the audience, um, after we've had a chance to talk together, we're actually going to invite you into this conversation a little bit too. So um, you might be uh, doing your own thinking um, as we go along here. So um, to start this off, um, maybe I'll start with Bo, if I could. Um, in the last couple of days, what, if anything, has happened for you that has been kind of a, a mover of the needle for you? Has anything happened that's really um, moved the needle for you in terms of your own work? Yeah, I mean, I, as I think about it, coming over here was a different perspective. I'd, I'd been to SOCAP in the U.S. a few times, um, and we do most of our work in Asia, but I hadn't had a perspective on what was going on, I think, in the minds of, of folks over here. So it was a very, I guess you could say, isolated uh, perspective on how we on the West Coast and the different folks who I talked to kind of viewed things. And so for me, it gave me a new perspective on approaches to sustainability, uh, what folks were really interested in when it came to even what impact really means and how we as a group actually need to message better in certain ways uh, what people are looking for and what people are looking to learn. Great. Oliver, you're, you're here more. Um, how about you? Did anything happen in the last couple of days that moved the needle for you? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> no, um, the, we, we're based, a small part of our team is based in Zurich. So we've been watching a little bit what's happening in the impact investment space in Europe. And I think against the context of what's happening politically, I think it's super exciting to see that w the image that comes to mind is like we, we are, the wave is about to, to crash and we're on the surfboard and we're going to ride that wave. And there's a constellation of a lot of interesting factors, you know, whether it's capital, whether it's in, uh, entrepreneurs, policymakers coming together and you get that buzz. So I think it's, it's really exciting and probably wouldn't have that, that same thing uh, if you would have done it three years ago. So interesting. There's some new perspective, but also this sense that maybe there's a little uh, catching the wave finally. Timing is timing. starting to be right. Somebody else uh, said something to me the other day about, uh, early in the conference, about the idea of feeling like they're a little bit on a surf ride. It might have been you, actually. Um, Veronica, how about you? I think a meeting with an investor before I came here, any meeting with any investor, is a very scary thing for a social entrepreneur. Um, you're like, how is my cash flow analysis actually looking and my estimated numbers for three years break even and, you know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and will I freeze And you're up? just scared of all the questions you're gonna get. And um, I think I always had this idea of uh, what, are, what are the investors actually valuing? So this gave me the opportunity to sit and listen to the insights of the thoughts. And I think my surprise is that I found that the investors you, uh, you investors, are very similar to entrepreneurs. There was especially one session where um, it was discussed that what do you value? And you value the people, the idea obviously, but the people that you work with, um, and the relationships and the passion that you see in the project, more than the numbers that is shown in the business plan. And I think that is exactly what you value as an entrepreneur as well. What you do and your passion. So 
that made me very happy because now I know we can speak the same language. D uh, did it give you more confidence? Yes, I think so, because uh, it takes away the... It's like going to an exam and you think you have to know the whole curriculum. Right. And so you know, like, okay, you, it's, it's fine if you fail on, on some things, as long as you have, you know, the right things right, then it's okay. And you can actually use, you know, the advice and not have to know everything. So, yeah, um, much better prepared now. And so the investor is less of a foreign quantity to you, less of a mystery, less of a fearsome something. Well, I still think that... Investors speak a very foreign language, mm. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I needed translation sometimes, even though I went to a business school. Um, and uh, I still today honestly will say that I won't actually know whether I want debt or equity at what point in my business life. Um, but I do know now that uh, I have contact and can actually ask people who are sitting on the other side and say, well, I have an offer from an investor. And I can call somebody or write them and say, can you talk me through this? Can you help me with this? Because you understand exactly what I'm saying. It's not a scary thing. It's a great transition to Faraz, actually. I just had this thought. Uh, Faraz and I were in a conversation yesterday, and one of the things he said when he was introducing himself was he said, I actually don't do well with jargon. Do you remember when you said that? Absolutely. So now here's an entrepreneur who's saying, you know, I... I uh, investors sort of speak this foreign language. And, you know, investors can do better, frankly, at... at at speaking clearly to entrepreneurs. Is this bringing up anything for you? This isn't quite the question I was going to ask you, but here we are. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, most of the investors, um, not more, I wouldn't say most of them, but um, it, it, the paradigm is basically changing. Now the entrepreneurs are becoming the, the, the investors. And you would find that um, those investors who have actually been entrepreneurs, they're less jargon oriented. Um, Coming back to your original question, I was just thinking, and um, it, this conference has worked for me on two scales, intangible and intangible. And for intangible, I'll just quickly um, share an anecdote. Um, a year back, uh, my seven-year-old daughter, she wanted uh, me to take her to a video store and get her Dora the Explorer. And I was busy in a meeting, and she kept on calling me. She called me <laughs> once, she called me twice, thrice, and I said, I'm in a meeting, I'm in a meeting. And then she sent me a text message and said, hey, this is important, <laughs> call me. <laughs> right? I call her, and I said, listen, Lailama, her name is Lailama. I said, Lailama, I'm, I'm, I'm really busy, just, you know, I promise I'll take you. And she said, Baba, can I say something to you? I said, yeah. And she said, um, lack of commitment, now these are, the, these are her words. She's seven, she was seven, year, year, seven years, two months old. <laughs> Lack of commitment is not conducive for relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a needle mover. <laughs> and I looked around in the meeting and I said, listen, I gotta go. I drove my car, I went back home, I picked up my daughter and my wife. I got her the DVDs and I asked my wife, it was like, lack of commitment conducive relationships, where is she getting this from? <laughs> and soak up over here. I mean, these are all those questions that made me realize that we're living in a world where um, the, the, the children are extremely informed. They're very engaging and very daring compared to our generation. And they ask questions, um, questions that um, we need the answers, and SOCAP basically gave at least the direction to those answers. That was the intangible bit. The tangible bit was that I've been actually looking to create um, a window for Pakistani social entrepreneurship landscape for international investors and entrepreneurs. Um, and I found my solution with Bertola over here. Oh, fantastic. And uh, we're creating a project, and hopefully in, in, in three and a half months' time, we we'll create that window. Wow. That's fantastic. Great to hear. Yeah. Any thought that that brings up for you, Kevin? Um, you know, Other than seven-year-olds who are overly <coughs> articulate. Well, I, I've, I've, I've experienced those <laughs> as, as a grandfather these days. Um, yeah, I, I think you know, uh, the commitment and the relationship. I think I've seen four or five uh, Swedish investors here who have... Uh, come here because they've invested in a particular entrepreneur who's appearing here, somebody who was an investor in Pee Poople, somebody who had uh, done like uh, Hampus Jacobson around Barista, and they'd only seen the commitment to the individual, and then when they got here they said, 
oh, there's more like that that's in context. And so I think they were led yep. by the commitment to the relationship. And I think that it opened up, uh, uh, this is really interesting, Swedish investor, you know, a, a, her father had a, a business that, that built things. She has a business that is investing. And she's looking to do that kind of investment. But I think the, the, the relationship and commitment brought them here seeking context. So I think that's, uh, I think that's, a, that's a key thing that I'm seeing here. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you ended up with a new idea, actually, out of the last couple of days. Bo, did you come up? Did anything come up for you that was? Did you actually generate any new ideas for your own uh, fund, for your new work? Um, uh, did that happen to you too over the last couple of days, or was it more about making connections and sort of this perspective that uh, that this has provided for you? Yeah, I mean, all of our stuff is really Asia focused, and yeah. so it's very, very nuanced in a yeah. lot of ways. But so, from new ideas, I would say no. Yeah. Uh, connecting with some folks and also feeling like there were people that I could help connect with other people who I think they would have never come in contact with because of there there is a divide yeah. on, a, on a geographical basis and I've heard a lot of people come up to me and say you know have you tried to replicate that in a different geography and I said we're always willing to do it but I don't know where I would do it or I, I think Veronica and I talk quite a bit about different people I, I know in Asia who could you know, be very good partners as she starts to scale her business. So it, it was really more on the connection side. Great. Yeah. Oliver, how about you? Did anything, did you actually spawn a new idea for you um, in the last couple of days? You've, you know, you're sort of seasoned at uh, venture philanthropy. It's, it's more that a couple of ideas that we've been discussing in, in the kind of, with other investors, um, we got validation for that. So, so one certain thing when, you sp when we spoke to a lot of the entrepreneurs here, and this is always the inspiring part, is we always hear we need working capital. That's yeah. a lot of times. So, and we've been together with the Shell Foundation and some others. We had an energy roundtable in Zurich in, in February where this, this came up. So the more we get this kind of validation, it sort of spurs us on and say, OK, what can we do in East Africa to create a working yeah. capital facility that all the entrepreneurs out there can just go there and say, I need X to ship whatever. Let me get let me get on with it. So it's it's put the the ball back in our court to think through some of these structures that can be very simple, but what is really needed out there to move the needle? So more like impetus. Like I I need to do more to solve this problem. Yes. I can do something about this. I don't have to just sort of claim that it's somebody else's. Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. How about you, Veronica? Did you have an actual new idea for your venture that came out of the last couple of days? Anybody sort of change your entire strategic focus, for example? <laughs> No. <laughs> That's probably good news <laughs> but for now. <laughs> I did have the privilege of um, having the table out here yeah. and doing the pitch here. I think I have been very, very lucky personally um, because it's much easier to stand up here and say something and then anybody who's interested can come and find me instead of me spending three days running around and finding you. So what I do have is um, 10 pages in my book with really stressful notes of a hundred ideas from all of you that I spoke to, who had uh, <laughs> insights, um, both from you know everything from who to partner with, to rethink the way you brand it, to should it be pink? I mean, on so many different levels, and I have not had time yet to, to digest it. I'm gonna do that when I come back, and I'm very, very proud to go back to my partners in Kenya and discuss all these ideas. So I didn't have any new ideas, but all of you did. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you all for the hundred yeah. ideas that Veronica is now digesting. And I think <laughs> as an investor, it's also good to hear that you didn't change your focus because you, of the last conversation you had. That's also right. a reassurance of focus, but then ideas to add to what you're already doing or maybe change the branding, maybe change the color, maybe change some of the marketing around it. But that's also a good thing where it's, you, you yeah. suddenly didn't say, oh, I'm working on something else, you know? No. I yeah. mean, it's, it's also. My, I mean, my, my my business is very simple. It's only one thing. So if we right. limit it, that we we have to hold right. on to something, right? No, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> no, but the, I think um, when you put yourself out there, and that's actually my experience too. We've, I've also had a great discussions with all the other fantastic entrepreneurs that are here, and when you actually risk it and put yourself out there, and don't always try to speak the language as if you are in control of everything every time you meet a stranger, but actually say the things that you don't know. Um, it's very banal, but it really works. It really, really helps. So I think personally that is what has benefited me the most, actually putting your skeleton and your meat and blood, and then you, people can walk by and 
punch you in the nose and you <laughs> <laughs> realize where it hurts and where it's actually okay. So that's yeah. well said. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Thomas Jacobson finds your business interesting. He might be a guy to continue to follow up with here in, in Malmo who does investing. So he did give me his email and said, he "Contact did. me." <laughs> so we'll <laughs> see. He responds, <laughs> and he responds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The next question is a little more, uh, a little tougher. In other words, it, it, it's really one that I care deeply, and I know Kevin does, that we learn from you about, but it's, um, it's sort of the other side of the coin, which is, did the last two days um, inspire anything to come up for you that was, like, made your stomach sort of a little queasy, or either for your business or for this enterprise of creating this market uh, in the middle? Was there any kind of worry, doubt, fear, disappointment, um, or just plain, like, Ugh, you know, something I thought I felt so sure of is is now feeling a little less uh, secure. And whoever of you feels ready to answer that should just uh, pick up the mic and give us a candid response. Um, please. Um, I still today <laughs> don't actually really understand what is the difference between an impact investor and a really good investor. Great. In general, like what is, you know, because if you have a really good investor that takes care of all the different needs you have and helps you and all the uh, supports you, trains you, understands your vision, whatever your business is, um, I still have a difficulty understanding where people position themselves in that and how the deals can be different. Um, I'm not in doubt about how many great investors there are and that the market is different and that you're looking for different things, but the matchmaking with the right investor, I think, is more are you the right investor for me and not the branding or the name or the stage or do we understand each other? Do we speak the same language? Yeah, so that was still a confusion, I guess. And that's, that's really good to be at that stage where you don't know. I mean, I think probably the Voxtra folks maybe said it pretty well this morning. And they're the, you know, the, the Nordic Impact Investment Fund. And they said when they sold it to investors, they sold impact and then said, and it will pay for itself. And so I think... You know, for at your stage, you want someone who, you know, what they want is to make a difference and they want it to be financially sustainable over time. I mean, that's the... No, but I, mean, yeah. I do understand what impact yeah. investment is. Right, yeah. But I'm, I mean, in 15 years, 20 years, let's hope if we all continue in this direction, there is no difference between social business and business, right? Um, exactly. So, uh, and I think it's, this, it's interesting because sometimes you can get stuck in words, in definitions. Are you at the seed stage? Are you at this stage? Are you an impact investor? Is this patient capital or is this something else capital? And it's just been confusing to navigate in the whole, um, and it's part of, you know, it's, it's being developed. But I just, that was my stomach feeling after two fantastic days. It's still, you need the right investor who understands what you're doing and who has the beliefs in what you're doing and the impact that, you know. Yeah. It's a great place for an entrepreneur to have a queasy stomach because the alignment of your investors with you um, is really so significant when you decide that it's time for you to access capital, which for you is now. Um, so I, I actually feel sort of good that your stomach is turning over a little bit. The other side of it, though, about the sort of the space of opportunity and sort of clarification, that's the other side of what you're saying, which is, I think, part of where we are in terms of an evolution. Who's next? Anybody? Again, on two fronts. Uh, one was these, the, this, this extensive jargons which actually make life really difficult <laughs> for entrepreneurs, especially. Um, uh, now, I've, I've been a grassroots entrepreneur. When I go to people now and, and when I invest, I don't ask them these very difficult questions and ROIs and, and, and seed and, and all that. And I said, what do you do? And he said, all right, this is what I do. I was like, all right, so how much money do you make? In, in his language, in her language. And um, how do you do your business? And then it's up to me as an investor to actually put these jargons and, and models according to the information. So I think that needs to, and that's an education for investors to yeah. actually redesign their communication. Um, on the other front, the, 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 not exactly a worry, but the momentum that has been created in, in, this, in this gathering, the, the fire, the excitement, the exchange of ideas, um, the thunder, the, the continuity of that. And, and this continuity, not only in terms of staying in touch or networking or communication of ideas, but actual actions. A continuum. Yes. Yeah. How and um, 
where that is going to go to. I mean, if, if this dilutes, if this fades down, it would be one of the most unfortunate things. I'm sure it wouldn't. And that was a question that came in my head. I mean, just, just to follow up on one point before I kind of make my other point is, I, I think that the communication does need to be better between entrepreneurs and investors. One of the things that I'm finding a lot, and I, it would be interesting to hear Oliver's thoughts as well, is we have very limited teams. Yeah. And a lot of times I find myself helping the entrepreneurs bake and you know iterate on their business models, which I think is great. And we have a commitment to doing that. Uh, one of the downsides of that is that it does slow down our process if I have to go in and help someone completely rework their financials because they haven't taken the time to figure out how do I present this in a way that's easily digestible. So uh, there's always that balance. Uh, we're, very, we're very open to helping, but then there's a lot of frustrations a lot of times that come from the entrepreneurs when I think that there were some things that they could have done to prepare their materials a whole lot better so I could actually understand what they are doing. And so it's a, it's a give both ways. And you know we're very, very, we, we realize we're in a messy business a lot and word, uh, yeah. that it's very early on, but you, we're based in San Francisco too. So I, one of the things I see from all my other friends who aren't in impact investing but are raising money all the time is that you know, they go talk to every one of their entrepreneur friends and you know, they do their pitch 15 times and they present their, put their materials together and they say, how do I need to present this if I go talk to Klein or if I go talk to these guys? And so they're, they're really working on it. And that's one of the problems about the space is that it's, we're very, very fragmented from a geographic standpoint and having access to people who've gone through that process is very difficult yeah. as well. So one of my pieces of advice would be, don't be scared to talk to your investors and say, I need to understand this, but don't be shocked when I say, I need you to go back and put this together differently because I can't understand it. And then, you know, kind of on, on the other side, what's made me a little bit, I guess you could say, concerned is, and it's kind of been building a little <laughs> bit, um, and, and so it wasn't all here today, but when I did hear some people who are very well connected and understand uh, how foundations invest and how people are looking at program related investments and where money is flowing from and that traditional financial institutions are not a source you can go after. It did put me in that state where I thought we still are very early on in some ways of being able to raise tremendous amounts of funds. And yeah. so the reports that come out and say we're going to have a 10x increase every single year in the amount of funds going into this, I, I think that we just need to be patient and we realize we have a long slug ahead of us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just as my business partner was really there in the early days of venture capital back in the valley, you know, it, it took a long time and it wasn't until they unlocked some different regulations right. that said that pension funds could now invest right. into venture and private equity funds that you started seeing money flowing. And I think in some ways with fiduciary responsibilities based on foundations of saying either I need to do it as a program related investment, which it can't be, I can't even, it has to be primarily not for profit, you know, and some other things. And then they switch their investment hat on and then they need to say, hey, I need to preserve all my capital. And if I, if I do the, a bad investment, I'm gonna, they're gonna come after me personally. There's just a lot of things there where I think we're still, we still got a ways to go. Yeah, I, so. I think that's very, very true. And I, I'm not surprised that that's kind of, kind of feeling like a worry. Um, and has, as someone who's raised capital previously in several impact uh, funds in California, it looks to me like it's getting slower to raise funds, not faster. So, um, is that Oliver? The worry, the niggling. The, the niggling <laughs> is um, that, we, that we're not moving fast enough. Yeah. Um, I, thought, I think well, I, there's sort of a, a part of me which is super excited and I go away with incredible insights and, and, and great new friends and that you can work with, but I also go, whack, uh, go away and the, <coughs> the kind of problems that we're trying to solve, um, we need to get moving, yeah. and we need to get get away from. It needs to be completely designed. It needs to be, you know, this kind of risk averse and somehow we need to have. I think the, the belief in the resources that we have and the kind of visions that we all carry in our mind to work together much more collaboratively. So, what I would love to see at SoCap as well as for me is the the kind of third P at the table. I mean, if you think about public money, um, private money, but also philanthropic money. And where are the big companies that are setting up BOP funds yeah. uh, that have tremendous resources and knowledge that can help young entrepreneurs? Where are they? They should be at the table. The policymakers should be at the table saying, 
hey, here's a great new structure. We that's need a fourth to. <coughs> that's a fourth. Yeah, that's a fourth piece. <laughs> and and for me, that's that's I go. That's one thing that I go away with. Like, how can we in the sector bring those those kind of piece together and make the cake bigger, rather than having to discuss how how do we slice up this little muffin. Uh, that everybody's happy, yeah. we should make the cake, you know, as big as we can. Yeah. I, I know, Kevin, you probably are feeling some of that same um, sort of sense of the, I know I am, that, you know, we've got to design better for moving faster. Mm -hmm. And actually, whether it was purposeful, because you can read my notes, or inadvertent, <laughs> um, you've actually made a beautiful segue to my next question, which is actually the same question we're going to invite you in the audience to help us answer. Um, and I'm going to ask you to follow some rules in answering this question, and I'm then going to ask the audience to follow the same rule. So, um, and you will be particularly good at this because you've been practicing your, your short uh, pitch. Um, the question that we actually really want to hear from you about is if you could design the next SOCAP. You just offered a design point, actually. If you could design the next SOCAP, what would be the piece of design? What would be the piece of content? What would be the piece of new stuff that you would design in the next SOCAP? You're the designer now. You get the chance to uh, do it. My request of you, and it's going to be my same request of the audience, is um, you're going to have to answer succinctly. <laughs> so give it a little thought because um, I'm going to need to hear from you in sort of a single sentence uh, as in, in the next SOCAP, what I would do is design a matchmaking day for investors and entrepreneurs. That would be an example. That's not a good example necessarily, but that would be an example of how I need to hear from you because that's also how I'm going to invite the audience into this conversation. Um, and Rosalie and Kevin and I are all, as are our whole team, super interested in genuinely hearing from you. So starting with you, um, and Veronica, you are ready to answer, so I'm going to let you go first. And I think Rosalie's actually, yeah, um, thank you very much. I don't think matchmaking is that wrong, but I would just, um, I would do speed dating. Speed dating. Okay, yeah. speed dating. Half an hour, two minutes, move the chair, that's what, introduce yourself to the person you sit in front of, that's it. Great. That's what I would do. Okay. And that was beautifully done. You you met all of my expectations too in terms of <laughs> in terms of the process. Um, I would basically design it in, in a way that um, creates structure that each and every participant should contribute something in action rather than just exchange of ideas. Terrific. Okay, so each and every participant would exchange something in action, not just in ideas. Beautifully done. I have the, Im the image of a potluck, and if I would design it, I would build on your suggestion and think, ask, answer three questions. Why are you here? What do you want to get out? But also, what do you bring? Okay. So that it becomes more a, a two-way exchange of capital, knowledge, network, whatever it might be. But yep. those, those, three kind of, those three questions. And particularly that last one. So the, it's really about what are you bringing that you know, I, I really particularly focused on. So Rosalie, are we going too fast? A little too fast. <laughs> um, the, uh, Bo, have you got? You good? Yeah. Yeah. Just just one idea that I've always thought through at conferences, and I'm still trying to figure out, and I don't think I have a good recommendation for this, but I feel like one of the things that we spend a lot of time doing is providing background material as opposed to diving into nuance, and as opposed to me coming and giving, you know, telling you for five minutes what I do, if we could perhaps every single panel that people are interested in, if I just recorded a five-minute video that was my spiel, and before people came to the panel, you know, put some onus on people coming to panels to actually know what you do. So then, it's much more interesting. So then, if you and I are talking, right. we can actually talk about what are the lessons you've actually right. learned. How would you deal with right. this as opposed to getting just introduced to one another? What's right, going basically. on? Which they could actually, you know, I should be willing to do that and read on somebody's website really what it says. Or uh, I, I just think we'd learn a lot more. So um, what you're talking about really is both about being prepared to come to a panel, yeah. but it's also about the panelists being really prepared in, in advance with something that comes ahead of you. And video is a great, I think, a great tool for that. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I went to a conference recently, and there was a panel I went to, which honestly I had no expectations would be good. It's the best panel I've ever been to in my life because of how nuanced they got right. into the discussion. And I actually learned a tremendous amount about things that I didn't know. I mean, it was 
really in depth about micro insurance and you really got to learn what some of the top thinkers, the biggest challenges that they were facing as opposed to just a very blanket approach to what is it and, and all that. And I think we've kind of gotten there. I think people are, and you'll, we'll have people coming who won't know a tremendous amount and you know, there'll be some background material that needs to be provided. But. What was coming to mind to me too is if that also contributed to some of this design to move faster, you know, if we could get into the nuance but come out of that with, with design components for what are the gaps we need to fill to move faster, that becomes a really efficient um, use of all of our commitment. I think these are good ideas. I don't think I, <coughs> if, if you look at, take this as a potluck, what do you give, what do you, what do you bring? Uh, without jargon, I think we've heard that really clearly. And um, yeah, then the idea of, of quick speed dating, you know, where maybe you, you get into the nuance thing with, you know, speed dating partner number seven, speed dating partner number 12. So I, I think you have to uh, do some kind of moderation between need to know what everybody's up to and then I want to know a lot more about what you're up to. So I think some, some tools around what do you give and what do you, what do you want? And, uh, but how do I find out who's here that I don't know? And I think those are, those are great. I think those are, those are great. For, the, um, for, for you in the audience, um, we're going to turn this over to you now. Um, we've got uh, 10 minutes. Um, that's plenty of time for some great suggestions from you. But I'm going to ask you to follow my, um, my basic sort of ask, which is, when you're ready to talk, it's a sentence. It's a very specific, concrete design element. Otherwise, Rosalie's hand will fall off. <laughs> and we won't be able to keep up, but we're really interested in hearing from you as well. So is, if you've got uh, one and you're ready to go, raise your hand and the quick moving Bjorn. <laughs> How do we get 20% of core foundation funds into mission-related investment by the close of the next administration? which would inject right. $140 billion. <laughs> 20, uh, maybe if we'll write that in shorthand, it would be 20%. I work my way up. Uh, foundation. Yeah, corpus. There we go. Perfect. Thanks, Arthur. Ready to go? Yep. Uh, how uh, I would look at SOCAP itself as an enterprise and make a plan for SOCAP 10 years hence, and then bring it down. Okay. So uh, impact which we're looking at SOCAP uh, 10 years from now, and then who joins in three years from now, five years to nine, so have a big plan like an enterprise, and then break it down to what you want to okay. do next year. So start with the vision of 10 years out, and then reverse to here. Have you got that? I feel like I know we're making you do the, by far the hardest work. Are you okay? Next. <laughs> I'd love to see more facilitated participatory spaces. Can you say that one more time? Because I'm not sure everyone heard you. Uh, more facilitated participatory spaces for those All right, more facilitated participatory spaces. Do, do you mean like open space? OK, great. Thank you. And actually, building off of that, I would love to see a wall where people can put their questions that they're sitting with. Okay. And that we can all like learn from each other. So somewhat like I was asking here, what's come up for you that's a question, if there's a physical place yes. where you can put your questions. Yes, and the question second more. one for another participatory space would be collaborative art space, <laughs> where people can actually design the future that we want to see. That's music to some of our ears, I need to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Rosalie, have you, uh, do I need to, uh, got it, okay because we're ready to go with another one. Um, I'd you, like, I'll make you stand up if you don't mind. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'd like to actually combine, I think, all four and a couple of people's over here, um, sort of on the speed dating model, but take people, um, when they give what they're looking for, have some sort of metric um, for a participatory um, meeting of, say, four or five people that don't really know each other and just have them brought together at a particular time during the conference because I feel a lot of people here don't know who the other people are and you just can't shift through this many people. So if instead you did it by the metric of what they're looking for and you can put a social entrepreneur, a funder, and okay. X, Y, and Z. So the design component would be sort of uh, put people together by what they're looking for? And say that last part again. Sorry, in in small in a small in small meeting, group, four or five. small 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 space, small group. Okay, thank you very much. 
Um, hello. Um, my question is, uh, can we encourage the design of a transnational economic community of impact, pooling central capital and facilitating community and network development through accommodatory process <laughs> that would override the compartmentalized constraints? You know what I'm going to ask you to do? You're, you're the master, by the way, of creating a sentence. <laughs> um, would you mind coming down, physically coming down, and giving Rosalie what she needs to turn that into uh, a design element. Just come on right on down. Um, thank you very much. When I, I'm Rick Holt. Uh, what I would like to do is combine several of these in a charrette type uh, where you have a table of interest. And there's a point at which you have the pop-ups, which is a great thing, but the table of interest allows people to go find the people that are there that represent the different interests okay. that we could all aggregate to. Okay. So. A little bit of a build, I think, on some of these design components, but it's the charrette concept, really. Did you, are you okay? Okay. <laughs> 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 Who's next? I, I would um, build on some of the themes that were started here in terms of providing some scientific context so that entrepreneurs can identify planetary opportunities with some of the large scale contextual threats and, and opportunities that are happening within the planet on a global and local scales. Are you speaking like a, a map? With um, the planetary opportunities? Yeah, I think, well, I think there are different ways to communicate it, but I think that the, the scientific data provides a very important context that maybe is sometimes not necessarily very obvious when we're just talking about addressing needs, that there are other factors. And having the Resilience Center here was, was wonderful, but to be able to continue that dialogue Great. Is, seems important. So really having that scientific body of, 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 of facts and evidence behind would be, I think that's a really important point. I think we often all get sort of lost in the, you know, now it's a deal as opposed to, well, wait a minute, <laughs> what was the underlying uh, assumption that led us to think that this was uh, a, an area where we needed to invest? Go ahead. Yeah, I would build up on those points and I would love to see like an opportunity wall, which just says like, this is the idea or maybe this is the need and this is the person to talk to. Okay. So again, this is a physical wall, and this is an opportunity, and this is a person to talk to. So you present your opportunity, and actually the person to talk to gets in, written up there. Have I got that right? Did I get it right, though? Because we don't want to get your design idea wrong. Yeah, that was right. Okay, I just wanted like an overview <laughs> board. Where you I, I could see me see later, it. and you say, no, no, the last sentence was completely wrong. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Hi. Uh, Hi. Three simple ones. One on the terminology issue is a glossary page of investor definitions in the handout that goes out. Great. To glossary. Uh, I, hear, one, I hear applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the second one is an entrepreneur, if possible, on each of the panels. All right. Uh, have the actual meaning. Got with that money. one. Uh, and the third one, I guess, ties in with the science guy here about having some sort of uh, map systems mapping. Uh, what are the connections between some of these and potential negative impacts of certain investments as relates to other investments? So May I ask you one, one follow-on to that? Would you actually see that as a map everybody is drawing on, or do you, how do you picture that? Just tell me quickly. Well, we have these uh, sketch artists. Maybe there's yeah. a systems mapping sketch artist. Great. I don't know. Great. Well, that's, a great, that's a great ad, though. Thanks. Whose hand? You're... We've got time for about uh, five more, I think, if we keep this going at the right... Thank you so much, Bjorn. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, I see we are like a mo lot more focusing on the sharing of the explicit knowledge, more factual knowledge. I think for next session, we can more have a balance for sharing of the tacit knowledge as well, like meaning more skill sharing, skill building, personal cultivation. Okay, so, so skill building, personal, like acculturation, is that what you're talking? I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, thank you. <coughs> I don't want to move so fast that we miss your we miss it and we don't get what you're ask, you know suggesting. So that's why I'm stopping a little bit. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, two simple ideas. First is just a simple page that's going to be called "What's Next," where every single person, investor, and entrepreneur could put an action list so that we make sure that we go forward. And the second is just a video diary camera. So one corner where there is a camera and people can leave a message for the people that they didn't manage to speak to. So it can be a Speed, it can be a pitch and it sense to an investor he didn't manage to 
sketch or whatsoever, just a message for the future. So okay. <laughs> but you're using a camera, right? Yeah. Okay. I've got it. So you leave your message uh, in video form or in camera form, media form. I'm sorry, Might I be. don't <laughs> want to discriminate the people on the right side. Yes, so you're going to have to. Since you only gave me three more. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. He's uh, <laughs> bravo. <All right. laughs> um, more science and more knowledge sharing to encourage more transdisciplinary uh, dialogue between social and environmental. There's, I've just noticed a bit of a, a division between the two, and we really need to to learn from each other for these very urgent planetary problems. Did. You did everyone hear that one? I'm um, just for the in the interest of time. That was basically make sure that we have an interdisciplinary dialogue going on. Lots of graphs, lots and of knowledge graphs, sharing data, and things that allow that to be become we're all much good more at talking. more integrated. Correct. Right. My one sentence uh, recommendation is to bring in representative citizens and communities uh, in order to co-design a solution and implement them instead of designing them within a club of entrepreneurs and investors. Okay, so this, the stakeholder, the client, the, the every, is here. Um, you okay? Uh, we'll give, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of companies, they come here and they're, they found, find themselves at a crossroads. So it would be really cool to have like a competition. You bring in one company, they, they're at a crossroad and they're really open about their whole organization and everything and have SOCAP just input everything into that company, possibilities and contacts, and then throughout the whole conference, and then come up with some sort of, where should they go now? So it's the whole village, so to speak, giving input to that entrepreneur at a crossroads. If I got that right? Okay, thanks. And I think we can do two more? Is that what you got? Okay. I have an easy one. Um, allow for more muse, allow for more time in the act interactive sessions, and give us some more open space, and I mean outside, so it's not that noisy yeah. if you communicate with each other. More channel. time, more open space, physically open space. Get us outside. Um, following on the, uh, the glossary, if you could uh, post some, some paper somewhere where you put the definitions of the, uh, of, of the words and the, and the jargon, so that people that speak other languages could write down what they could be in other languages. I'm trying to think about how I'm Excellent. going to take that back to where I live, and I'm not sure how I'm how to translate all these things. So be, be, be more aware of, uh, of a, a multilingual um, ability to uh, translate, um, it, at least in terms of those very important terms that can turn into jargon. But thank you. Oh, speedy no. one. No. <laughs> and thank you to all of you. Um, <coughs> Kevin, go ahead. Yes, of course. Um, well, what I'm visualizing is that there are four or five main grades. Um, uh, mandates, investors, entrepreneurs, and regions, country regions. If you can have some sort of a diversity search in which, for instance, I want to search someone who is doing water investment in Guatemala. Um, you know, names come up. Right. So it becomes easier for any, any and everyone to get connected to the, uh, and be more specific about it. Right, okay. So again, it's the use of, uh, of, of the tools that we can use on online media, the SOCAP Connect, but make sure that it really can do that, that kind of, yeah. I, I guess so. <laughs> Please, of course. I, I just want to make one argument against it. <laughs> um, Right now, uh, I think that you know, focus is very important both for the entrepreneur and for the investor. But the more closed you are in what you do, so the investor is, you know, I can search menstruation, okay, nothing is going to come up, but water, um, <laughs> Guatemala, right? right? And so you'll be approached by somebody and you will not actually be open to new ideas. This, my personal experience is CEDA, the grant that we got from the Innovations Against Poverty, was completely open. And that's the only reason why we could get the seed funding. So if you just keep on thinking, I would rather try to, you know, keep your focus but keep it open in some ways and not try to learn to think in the boxes but that can, can be a, yeah, don't feel. Well, Kevin, this is, this is, you know, this is where I want to come back to you and also to close this out as a, as a, as a founder of the SOCAP convening and as a co-convener of SOCAP with Rosalie. Um, this must sound to you like th a little bit of f familiar territory, you know, this idea of welcoming the outsider and keeping the open, open mind along with this craving, this hunger, obviously, for people to design more ways to quickly interact. What, any uh, thoughts or ideas? I, yeah, I, I think a lot of the questions and a lot of the requests are 
what I hear a lot it, it is that we don't want to be drowned in jargon. We do want some clarity and, uh, you know, bringing in science, bringing in some systemic reality, and yet being open to, geez, this new thing. So I think it's, uh, you know, I, I, probably the, uh, the, the single piece of research that stuck in my head today was something from J.P. Morgan where they said 60% of investors would take a discount to return and 60% don't think they, they, they need to. That's 120%. That means <laughs> they're not clear. They're of two minds, and yet they're taking action before there's clarity. I mean, the, the good news is it's not clear, it's really early, and yet lots of new things are happening in response to the demand. I mean, and I think maybe the, way, the best way I, I've... Uh, heard to sum up the, the, the core of this market is that this is a market arising in response to a moral hunger. And you know, action takes, goes first and clarity comes afterwards. I think that's, that's what we're doing. And, and, and you know, one of the things that I so appreciate about your uh, hunger and appetite for joining us in this conversation about design is that uh, one of the things that really made it so important to me to join this organization is the idea of um, a core value of setting the table well, which is one that I feel, you know, a very strong personal um, attraction to, and it's one of the core values and also a core strategy of our organization. So I want to thank you all because um, with a little effort on our parts, we can listen carefully to what you want, and um, you, you're helping us set the table well for uh, the next SOCAP. So with that, I think we're out of time. We're probably out of energy or almost, except for Bjorn, who I'd like to see run like maybe two or three laps, if you could just. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and okay. and uh, I want to uh, give all of you a round of applause and thank you also to all of you for volunteering last minute to join us on stage and, and yeah. leave it to you, Kevin. To thank you for helping us build the conference. Thank you for helping us build the market that is at the intersection of money and meaning that is a movement and is also a new way of using and thinking about your money. So thank you all. Thank you very much.